Greetings, everyone, and welcome. It is Facts Only Part 2 today, November the 26th, 2024. On these Facts Only videos, I focus only on facts. Thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing, liking, sharing, and being a part of this, what we call the Hope Train community, not only here with the information I'm trying to provide, but helping us there on the ground inside Ukraine with our nonprofit. I will be returning there after Christmas. Thank you. I want to jump right in. There's three key stories I want to share this afternoon for you. Number one is President Zelensky, his evening address. He's speaking about a terrible strike in Sumy, and he's also speaking about the need for air defense. Second part I want to share is a direct comment on the Battle of Kupyansk, talking from military commanders there. And thirdly, I want to talk to you about Shahids. Those are changing in the war. And as you can tell, as of this morning's Facts Only video, it was a record number of Shahids launched. Ternopil is struck very, very badly damaged in their electrical infrastructure grid there. Um, but that's on the earlier Facts Only video if you didn't catch that. So these are the three topics we're going to carry right now facts only and the facts aren't coming from me they're coming from president Zelensky, and they're coming from others inside ukraine so thank you and here we go the first thing i want to share with you is where sumi is maybe you don't really know um but most likely you do uh but there's a reason i'm showing you this guy sumi is right here and this is actually the border between ukraine and Russia, and this is the um, the Kursk offensive that Ukraine is doing. So the reason you need to know that is because of what I'm going to share with you now. Sue me if as I zoom in, the city is right here, and it stretches out like that. Sumi was struck with MLRs, MLRS rocket systems, not drones, not missiles, not S or three four hundred modified ground. Uh, rockets. They were struck with MLRS systems, typically a range like up to 30 kilometers. So we know that Russia is now using MLRS systems to start hitting Sumi. It's not the best news. Do not take it from me, but take it from President Zelensky. He's the one that talks about it. We've already got two confirmed killed. There is one still under the rubble is the time of this recording that they're trying to get to. And what was the attack? It was a gas station. A gas station. Most likely, I've been at that gas station. I I know which one it was, and we're in that region of the city quite often, so I'm pretty sure Jane and I have been in that gas station. It makes me think all the time. So this is an unfortunate turn and change, but don't take it from me. Take it from President Zelensky. Here it is. In Sumi, rescue efforts continue at the bombed service station. Sadly, two died. My condolences to their families. Another person may be trapped. The strike also damaged a house, kindergarten, and nearby buildings. It was from a multiple rocket launcher system. The only real protection is destroying Russian weapons and launchers on their soil. That's why striking Russian territory is crucial. It's the only way to limit Russia's terror and their ability to wage war. I'm grateful to partners who understand this and explain it to others. We had a report from Commander Sirsky this morning and we'll have another talk tonight. The priorities are clear. The front, Pokrovsk direction, Kurakova, and the Kurdish operation. We value our partners' implementation of declared support. Aid packages are timely. It's vital that announced volumes match our agreements and actual needs. We need a new push in defense supplies, which we must secure in December. I want to thank everyone who stands with us, with Ukraine. Thank you, glory to Ukraine. So there you have it, guys. Zelensky talking directly about the MLRS system striking Sumi. It is an unfortunate turn. Typically, we see MLRS systems hitting closer to the zero lines, closer to those 10-kilometer range, those cities like Konstantinivka that would be outside of Chasivyar and Pokrovsk and Mirnograd and Orikiv, but now hitting a, a major city like Sumi with an MLRS system, that's a change. You can't stop it. It's, it, there's no air alarm. It just hits. You're, you're pumping gas and boom, you're hit. It's extremely dangerous and we need to keep our eyes on that. Zelensky will be meeting again with Sirsky, probably doing it right now in the late night hours in Ukraine, talking about the key areas of Pokrovsk, Kupyansk, and Kursk. That's where we're at. Now, the second thing I want to talk to you about is actually um, Kupyansk. So let's talk about Kupyansk. Kupyansk here, very important. If you're here and you do not know where Kupyansk is, 
This is the city of Kharkiv, and this is Chiguiv. This is Balaklia, Izum, and you come down to Kramatorsk. But the area we're focused on for this video is right here. Massive, massive Russian assault trying to take place. They want Kupyansk. Kupyansk, a city of about 35,000 people. Pre-war, it's a really a large spread out city with a lot of infrastructure that is very vital for Ukraine to hold on to right now. Uh, and forever, to be honest, but Russia really putting a lot of pressure coming into that northeast corner. Ukraine is defending. You're not going to take it from me. You're going to take it directly from a commander. You're going to see the video. I've translated it for you, but I want to come in now and look at Kupyansk because, yes, uh, Russia has made an entrance into northeast, although Ukraine has pushed back on this. I can tell you right now with the facts only video earlier. This map is not updated completely. Ukraine has pushed back on that assault. Now, with that said, what you're going to hear this commander talking about are the river systems right here. Uh, let me change that to a, we just go like a blue and let me make it a little bit bigger. So this river system that runs down through Kupiansk, okay, this is what Russia is trying to get across. They're trying to get across the river. They want to get onto the Ukrainian side and the Kupyansk side of that river. And Ukraine is defending it well. So this is what he's talking about. Here you go. The enemy is trying to launch specific assault ops, forcing water crossings. Our forces quickly destroy enemy troops and equipment attempting to cross. We use both artillery and FPV drones. Everything's under our control. Even if groups of eight, 10 enemy soldiers try to cross only two, three make it ashore. The enemy's destroyed there too. They're trying to infiltrate and build up forces, but it's not working. Our artillery and drones are inflicting heavy losses. So guys, there's some good news. We are defending Kupiansk. We're hitting them when they're trying to cross that river and we're defending well. So guys, you know what? Slava Ukraine. Now, I want to get to where the ground meets the road. This is what President Zelensky was talking about earlier, and we've been hearing Ukraine needs to continue to have the ability to strike and take out those vehicles that can launch attacks on Ukraine. It can be airplanes, it can be airfields, not just oil fields, not just refineries, but actually hit the bringers, I guess if that's an okay English word, the bringers of death, the Shahid mobile launching systems the MLRS systems, the S-300 and S-400 mobile launchers, and of course, airplanes and ships. Zelensky and others are talking about we need to be able to take out those, and that is a focus. That will change the war. I can tell you right now, as of the time of the recording of this video, Ukraine is striking about 1,200 kilometers into Russia right now. It is the information on it is just coming. Ukraine is doing a phenomenal job. As Zelensky said, just continue to supply us. Just continue to supply us. It'll happen. Not only supply us, but he said timely and with exactly what we need. Ukraine knows how to fight Russia. In fact, we've heard it said over the last a uh, few weeks and months, Ukraine's becoming one of the best armies in the world, especially in regard to technology and how to deal with modern systems that are coming against them from Russia. And yes, Russia is using very modern systems, especially in electronic warfare and drones. Ukraine doing a phenomenal job. Now, let's get to Shahids. As you know, 188 drones attacked. Shahid drones attacked Ukraine last night. Ternopil was devastated in their electrical grid. I can tell you there are some Shahids flying around right now. We're getting to the point where we're seeing Shahids flying all the time, not just at night, but in daytime. You may ask, well, what keeps the Shahids from flying? Basically, very windy conditions and um, bad weather. Other than that, even clouds, they're rolling. And they're developing new technology to swarm them together with artificial intelligence. They can communicate together. They use uh, Ukrainian cell phone towers. You name it, guys. They're coming. And the Shahids are a problem. But facts only video. Let's go straight to Ukraine and hear some thoughts from experts. How far can Russians go to attack critically, destroying the power grid? They might launch 300, 400, 500 simultaneously. 
They absolutely can, but it all depends on the number of launchers because these Shaheds aren't launched from airfields. They're launched from special launches, and the number of people involved in programming these Shaheds is limited. I see tactics changing now. Russians are trying to launch Shaheds 24 7 meaning if it was only at night before, now we see launches during the day and evening too, to keep the air defense system constantly under pressure and naturally shoot down fewer drones. There you have it, guys. Direct from Ukraine, this information coming out just about an hour ago, to be honest with you. That's the reality. 188 drones yesterday, but they have the capability three to 500. And I know the million dollar question, well, they'll run out of drones. The reality is probably at three to 500 a day, it would hurt their supply dramatically, but nobody really knows how many drones they're making. For sure, for sure, they can launch a hundred drones a day easily. They are manufacturing that many, plus what others are being potentially supplied, of course, from Iran and other places. But I can tell you, the war machine for match for manufacturing Gerund Va, Gerund Tuz, the Russian modification of the Iranian Shahid, is nonstop. It is a war machine. And they're rolling them out. They're adjusting the technology. They're adjusting the payloads. They're adjusting the camera systems. They're adjusting the computer systems. They're adjusting the comm system, the communication systems. It is a nonstop adjustment. Ukraine needs to be able to take out these mobile launchers, take, take that war machine and push it back and push it back and push it back away from the Ukrainian border. And at the same time, <laughs> we have another massive uh, issue going on with the front lines, not talking about that tonight or right now, other than what we just talked about on the good news, really, from Kupiansk, where Ukraine is doing a good job defending the waterways there. So, that, guys, that's where you're at. It. That's where you're at. We need to keep our eyes on the Shahids. We need to keep our eyes because it appears, and we have confirmation from Ukraine military analysts, that it is nonstop increasing. And I believe we will see an increase the next two months. going to be quite, quite eventful as this war unfolds and we move into 2025. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting, liking, subscribing. Thanks to all of our mod team helping us do everything that we do to bring you the truth and for you helping us help Ukraine on the front. Be blessed and have a good day.